Lois Howard McKinnon. And uh, when and where were you born? Uh, February the, uh, 6, 1923, in Salisbury, North Carolina. And tell me a little bit about what it was like growing up there. Uh, I didn't live there long, and most of the, that I can remember is from Avamall, North Carolina. And I lived there for about three years, and we moved around. Well, what were your mom and dad's names? My mother's name was Constance Elizabeth Long Howard, and my father was Michael Lawrence Howard. And what was your mom like? Well, she was the boss. And um, what she said, we did. Or we went out and got switches. And your dad? Uh, he would tell my mom when to spank. <laughs> but he was easy to get along with and told a lot of jokes and things like that. He was very likable. What did your dad do for a living? He had a bakery. Yeah. We had a lot of broken cakes and, and pies. So I'm guessing you learned to bake when you were young. No, we never did. Uh, my father did all the, he brought home the broken things. So we didn't, my mother didn't have to cook cakes and pies. Did you have any brothers or sisters? I had two brothers. Um, Wallace, Robert Wallace Howard and Manly Lawrence Howard. And what were your brothers like? Well, Manly was the oldest and he was a lot of fun too. He had a lot of jokes. And um, uh, Robert, you didn't turn your back on him. <laughs> he was sneaking. Do you have a funny story about him? Oh, no. He, well, uh, the oldest one, Manly, I have a lot of stories about him, but... Uh, Tell me one. Okay, Manly had graduated from college, and uh, the government got a hold of him and uh, wanted him to go to uh, the, uh, Illinois, University of Illinois, to learn to make atomic bombs. And he was one of the ten that knew how to make atomic bombs. And um, when he was living in Oak Ridge, Tennessee, where he was working, um, when the war was over with, uh, all of the so uh, uh, Secret Service men put on uniforms, and he found out that both people, men, uh, uh, families that lived next door were Secret Service, and they were guarding him the whole time. And uh, one time he was, after the war was over with, he was offered a job in a foreign country, and uh, the Secret Service knew about it and wouldn't let him go because they were afraid they might capture him and torture him, make him tell how he made atomic bombs. Wow. So he was important. <laughs> There's a Krispy Kreme story. Oh, yes. I was fishing on a dock one time. I lived at a uh, country club, and um, he, this man walked out on the dock and uh, we were talking. He's, after talking about 10 or 15 minutes, he said, well, what was your name before you were married? I said, Howard. And um, he, he asked me, is your father named Mike Howard? And I said, yes. He, was he a baker? And I said, yes. And he said, you know, he taught me how to make donuts. And he went out and started his own donut place, his Krispy Kreme Donuts. So I was shocked. And I, my father had never said anything about that. And I uh, came home and um, he said, uh, I said, you know the man that makes the Krispy Kreme Donuts? And he said, yes, he worked for me. That's well, I have to thank your father when the Hot Now sign is on. <laughs> yes, yeah, it was. <laughs> but it was... Amazing, on a fishing dock. Did you have a family tradition or something growing up that was important to your family? Well, I always loved, uh, in summertime, when uh, I was a little child, my uh, mother's sisters and we, we would get together and um, 
go to a, a mountain and, uh, for a family reunion, and we would cover the, uh, climb up the mountains, and all of the kids, they knew all about it. And uh, that kept on until, to this day, we have a family reunion every summer. And it would be at least 25 people in the, in the house with us. What were Christmases like? Oh, well, it was quiet. Because everybody in the family were at their own homes. So, but we had, we didn't have big presents when we were a little girl, when I was a little girl. I think one Christmas I got a broom, a little kid's broom, and one year I got a baby carriage, sort of, and we got one present, that's all. Did you have a favorite toy when you were growing up? Something that was No, special? we had animals, a lot of our animals. We had a, a pet rabbit and a dog, and they were together too. <laughs> but, um, um, Describe a person or a situation from your childhood that that had was important to you, had a profound effect on your life. Well, it wasn't, I wasn't so young then, but I, I, when I was at college, my uncle was a guy, um, math professor, head of the department, and he um, and also a teacher at Sunday school. So he used to give us a lot of advice. And he, to become a head of the department, he had to be, have a master's degree. So he, after he had been teaching for so many years, he went back to Duke to, to uh, get his master's degree. And one of the books that he studied was one that he had written. So. You seem to know a lot of important people. Well, they're part of my family. <laughs> That's important. <laughs> Thomasville, North Carolina, and um, and another thing, they only had eleven grades when I went there. And so it was, and the year that I graduated, they started having twelve grades then. Do you have a, an important memory from high school? Something mm -hmm. that stands out? No, uh, -uh this we had fun. And what That's happened all. after high school? I went to college, and. Uh, I went where my uncle taught, and uh, in Tennessee, East Tennessee, and uh, oh, and I was uh, taking a psychology class one time, and the teacher was talking about different uh, students he had been teaching, and uh, one of them, I didn't know it was my brother, and uh, he said there was someone that had come to that college. And it had the highest IQ that had been recorded there. And, um, but he wouldn't graduate. He kept changing his, ma his major. And the reason why, it was a teacher's college then. And then the following year, or two years, it was going to be a state college. And um, he didn't want to graduate from a teacher's school, uh, college. So he kept going so he could graduate from state college. So That's the major? one, Manly. Oh, Manly. Okay. <laughs> yeah. What was your major? Uh, uh, math, and I um, wanted to be a CPA. And so what, did, what did you end up doing? Getting married. <laughs> no, um, I went to college three years, and this is during the war, and the government came by to, uh, to recruit people to go to uh, a school for the how to do things for the government and stuff. So I, and we were going to get paid and all our expenses uh, paid and everything. And I gave up my, at the end of the third year, I should have stayed. I was, because I didn't go back. So I didn't, I only one in my whole family that did not go to finish college. So. That was a big deal you even went back then, right? Oh, yeah. For ladies, my, at least. Oh, yes. My mother, all of her sisters, all graduated from college. There was a, some man that uh, had money, and they gave, I don't know, member of the family or what it, where it was, where they got it, but they all went to college. And, and that was a lot of, for them. Well, tell me about the love of your life. 
Well, the love of my life was my husband, but the uh, love of, uh, of my growing up is uh, have, four, uh, have children, and they, when they graduated from college, that was, that was it. That was the love of my life. Tell me how you met, uh, met your husband. How did you meet him? In uh, New York City. I was uh, secretary to the uh, treasurer at Radio City Music Hall. And the cashier in the uh, booth in the subway, was, right, was a subway station there, uh, she had to go to lunch. So I went down there and took her place while uh, she went to lunch. And I, my husband was a policeman then, and he was going to college. And uh, so that's how we started talking. And, what was yeah. your husband's name? Paul James McKinnon. What, what stood out? His nickname was PJ. What stood out about PJ? What, what, what attracted you to him? Yeah, well, uh, he was a lawyer, too, at the time. He was still I was studying to be a lawyer. And uh, so uh, we had was talking about going to school, going to college, and that's how we started. And he went to change his uniform, so he dropped me off at the bar uh, near where he had to change his clothes. And uh, he said, uh, what would you like to drink? And I, I didn't know, I didn't want a drinker. So I, uh, he, I started to say Coke. And uh, then he said, uh, what kind of a uh, cocktail would you like to have? And I said, Southern Comfort. That's the only thing I knew. Southern Comfort and Coke. And he said, you were mixed. And I said, no, separate. <laughs> so you know then uh, I'm not a drinker. I wasn't a drinker then. Tell me about your wedding. Well, we were married at, um, um, at the... What is it? Office. <laughs> it was, we just, we didn't have a, this was during the war. You didn't have weddings then. So, uh, got married at the marriage. The war back then was way different than it is now. What was oh. it like go, growing up during World War II? Oh, well, I remember when we got our first uh, radio and there's no TVs. So our radio was a big, round, big piece of furniture then. And um, so we, we just... What was your first car? I don't know. I guess it was a Ford. But it, and we were going for a ride. This is when I was about four years old. I can just barely remember it. And it started raining. And we stopped the car and got the windows out of the trunk and hooked them on. That's how they had red, uh, windows in. And you had to crank the car in the front to turn it on. And that was up to date car. <laughs> it wasn't an old one. Do you remember your first TV? Yes, it was a black and a white one. And uh, it's 63 years ago. He was a baby, <laughs> a second son. So, uh, we, but we didn't have too many programs, and it didn't go on all night. Did you have a favorite program, though, that everybody mm -hmm. stopped everything to sit and watch? No, I didn't. I was busy having babies. <laughs> I had three in four years and two months, so. Tell me yeah. about them. Well, they all turned out to be good and well-educated. And um, I have no complaints. What are their names? The first one was uh, Mike Albert, Michael Albert McKinnon. Second was Robert Franklin McKinnon and William Thomas. And uh, then I had a daughter, Karen Ann. And we couldn't decide what name to name the girl. If we knew it was a girl then, and uh, I was reading a book to the, ki the kids in school in uh, the car, and uh, 
the girl's name was Karen Ann, and I said, oh, that's pretty. We'll name her Karen Ann. We all decided in the car then that we would name her Karen Ann. Uh, tell me a fun story about Mike growing up. What was he like? Hmm. Well, I tell you, I was a little smarter than he was, because if, if he, when he was 13, 14 years old, and he, you know, he, sometimes they would try a cigarette, and I, since I didn't smoke, all I had to do is kind of touch him. And, I, and then I smelled my hand, and I knew he was in trouble. <laughs> so. And then the next son? My, uh, Bob. Bob. Mm -hmm. Well, he, they all played uh, uh, baseball and handball in front of the house. And... Uh, they would uh, behave, because if they didn't, they would have to not play, and they, we didn't have uh, air conditioning then. And uh, the windows were open, and they would have to stay inside and practice the piano while the others were playing, and they behaved. After the first time they had, they missed playing. And the youngest son? Bill. Uh, he he couldn't keep up with the other two, so I would. Um, hop, who would who's going to listen to this? The Just the family. Just the family. Whomever. Okay. He he wouldn't um, change his clothes fast enough. So after school, and um, he would come out, and when they would get dressed, uh, he would come out. Sometimes still had his white shirt on or whatever. And um, so I warned him two times. I said, the next time you come out and you hadn't changed your clothes, I'm going to take your clothes off right here in front of, in, outside, and um, spank you. Well, he, it happened one more time. But that's all, just that one more time. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a funny story about Karen? No, no. He, she had a hard time keeping up with the three boys. It was four and a half years difference between the lower, youngest boy. So, uh, but she loved him. He, she would play uh, ride bikes. If they were riding the bike, she had to too. And she was only about three or four years old riding the bike without train wheels because she didn't. He, she had to keep up with the brothers. She turned out to be the smartest one. <laughs> what is your happiest or proudest moment in life? When I got all my kids educated, I guess that was the proudest. Um, do you have a faith or a belief that's been important to you in life? Well, I was, yeah. Um, I was Lutheran, and um, we lived on the, the, the country club, you know. And um, on Tuesday, the preacher could play golf free. So every Tuesday, I played golf with the preacher. <laughs> How is your golf game? Well, it was pretty good until I hurt my back, and then I had to stop. <coughs> yeah. I, I had a son that was very good, and he used to teach me. Did you have any other hobbies that you liked to do? Um, play bridge. I, I played, um, I learned to play bridge, and in two years I was a life master in the duplicate bridge tournament. And I traveled three countries playing bridge. And, we ever, well, I hurt my back and I couldn't play golf anymore and everybody else was playing golf, so I had to play, take up some uh, hobby and I played bridge. I've never heard of a life master. What is that? Well, you have to uh, play in tournaments and get so many red points, so many black points, and, and I got, and it's hard. I have uh, a cousin. It took her years to become a life master, and then her husband, who's an engineer, never became a life master. And she, they used to travel all over, to uh, trying to accomplish that. Couldn't. 
Uh, is there anything, if anything, you would do differently in your life? No, I think I had a very easy going because I could control it by keeping them in from playing. So it was very easy to raising them. Um, do you have a funny joke or story that you always love telling people? It's like your story that you tell. Well, my father was a uh, storyteller, and he had someone come in to visit him one time, and he, uh, he said, you see those cows out there on Haifa lying down, Haifa standing up or something the other, and, and he said, you know why they're lying down? Uh, they, uh, oh, I started the joke wrong. <laughs> they would tell. They would, uh, he, some cows knew how to tell t uh, time and some didn't. Uh, I don't know. I've forgotten it now. <laughs> no, I don't know any funny jokes. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Good thing my husband's not here then. <laughs> yes, yes. Who did you date in World War II? Okay, I, uh, Alan Greenspan. I went with him for about six months. When I was, and then, uh, see, we, I had three roommates, and uh, when one would go out for a date, we all went together. So, and um, so, uh, one of them worked for the Department of Interior, I mean, the um, War Department, and uh, she was kind of successful in, in secretary. And the, the four, uh, Navigators and air pilots came in to interview the her boss, and uh, anyway, they she got a, a, a date for the four of us, and I dated one of the pilots that dropped the bomb, the atomic bomb in Japan. The Enola Gay or whatever. Okay. Uh, yeah. Wow. Uh, you have this atomic bomb connection. Oh yeah, yeah. That's right, I did. I didn't realize that. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Alan Greenspan, what was he like dating him? Oh, he was, uh, he wasn't a good dancer. But he, we would go out, back in those days, but when we dated, we went to a, kind of like a nightclub. It's not like a nightclub now, but for supper, and, and they had a little orchestra, and they would dance and things like that. And it's, but um, we went out to supper with, a group, but it, he was stationed at um, in Washington. But he, uh, he, his camp was at where he slept. It was in Arlington, Virginia. He was in the service. Did um, did you happen to have like a song that has always been your favorite song, either with you and your husband, or just you? Period. A, no, a song uh -uh. That, no, no song. No. No. But my husband was a good dancer. He was. What what kind of dancing did he do? Well, he did, could do the Charleston, but I couldn't do it. <laughs> See, back in those. But he was a good dancer. What did you love about your husband? Oh, uh, he loved me. <laughs> no, he, he was very nice. He's he was a lawyer. And uh, after he got out of the service. You know, you have the GI Bill that you go to, and he went back to school and got his Master's of Law, which very few lawyers ever do that. But he wanted to take a chance, uh, the advantage of it. And what branch of service did he serve in? He guarded the president. He was within five or six feet with, of him lots of times. Which president? Roosevelt. So he... And when he, Roosevelt died, then he was going into Secret Service, and then the war was over with. Did he ever tell you stories later on, like, you know, after yes, he was done yes. with his job, like, who when was they were, When they were having uh, dinner together, uh, his, uh, Roosevelt's family, well, he was just outside, and he saw Roosevelt's hand go on his girlfriend's hand, uh, knee, 
once in a while. I, but that's all. No father. <laughs> Talk as if you were, or if you could say anything to your kids that might watch this video later. What would you want to leave with them? Leave them. I don't know. Any words of advice, something you'd want, you'd want to say to your kids? No, they give me advice now. <laughs> I'm going to say great-grandchildren. They what? Your great-great-great-grandchildren. Oh, my. No, I don't know. Listen to the parents. Honor their mother and father. That's, you'll get everything will be all right then, I think. Yeah.